All my focus Pushing off the limits In this moment I feel your spirit moving All around me Coming out of your way I'm looking at the dry bones You're reviving This faith inside of my soul You're ignited You're calling me to levels That are high I can see your face
There's a simplicity, humility to the way you love me, and honesty, purity. God, you make it easy. No special words or formulas could ever win you over, for your love is undeserved. And even when I can't see clearly, somehow you still
Rock City Youth, can I share something with you? We've been fasting for 21 days. And in those 21 days, I've been praying, God, what do you want to see from me as a pastor, as a leader? What do you want to see for our youth ministry? And um, I, need to get, I need to get real with you for a second. I get up on the stage and I speak confidence and encourage you. Step out on faith and do this and that and be bold with your faith and be real with you. Every time I'm standing back there or on the side, I get this crazy feeling that, man, how could God use such a mess like me? How can God use someone messed up like, like me? I don't deserve to stand on the, this platform and preach your word. I don't deserve every Sunday. You, you might wonder why, like, why is Kyle the last person out? It's because I'm back there trying to get myself together because I am so, I feel so undeserving to be out here. And I know when I come out here, I'm like, yo, what's up? But that's not who I am on the inside. That's not who I have been on the inside anyway. And I know some of you have the same kind of thoughts in your head. How could God use me? Why would God use me? He, he knows everything I've done. I'm unworthy. Some of you are having those thoughts tonight. I can't even step in God's house without having those types of thoughts. And so these 21 days of praying and fasting, I've been saying, God, like, what do you want me to focus on in the next year? And he said, yo, get busy. He said, get serious, get busy. Get busy about what I've called you to do. Get busy about the reason you were created. Get busy about my kingdom here on the earth. And so as he was saying that, I was still filled with this anxiety because I'm, I'm looking at other youth ministries and they've got all this cool stuff and they've got big buildings. We have a huge building, but they've got bigger buildings than us and they get inflatables every single week. And I'm like, how do they do that? I'm looking and trying to connect with other youth pastors and every time I'm in the room with a bunch of other pastors, I never feel like I'm supposed to be in that room. The same way some of you all feel right here tonight amongst your peers is the same way that I have been feeling amongst my peers. I don't deserve to be in this room. I don't have what it takes to be in this room. Let me encourage you tonight. When God said, get busy about my kingdom, I said, how do I do that? He said, you gotta stop looking to your left and your right. You gotta focus on me. It's time to put down all the comparisons. It's trying to put down looking at other people and trying to figure out what they got that you don't have. The answer is nothing. It's not that they have something you don't have. It's that they're focusing on something that you're not focusing on. And so tonight, when you're in this building, I want you to focus on the one main reason, the one true reason we've gathered tonight, and his name is Jesus. So stop looking to the left and the right. Stop worrying about who's, what's happening on Snapchat and Instagram and, and TikTok. Stop worrying. That will be there when this is done. Stop worrying about what my friends might think of me if I lift my hands in worship or if I sing or if I come up front. I'm too cool to come up front. I'm too cool to respond. I'm too cool to sing. I'm too cool to do this. Or I'm not worthy enough to do this. I'm not worthy enough to even be here. My mama made me come. You're not qualified to do this. I'm not qualified to do this. Oh, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to be able to do it. And you might be saying, Pastor Kyle, you don't know me. Addiction runs in my family. Anger issues run in my family. Abuse runs in my family. There's no way to stop it. Yet it's running through your family, and then it's running into you. What you going to do about it? Oh, it ran through your family. Now it's meeting face to face with you and you have a choice. Either it can run through you too or you can look it in the eye and tell it to run away from you. You see, I, I come from a family that is full of people who are addicted to all sorts of things. But I looked at addiction and said, hey, no more, not me. It stops here. It's not gonna run through the Bernie family anymore. And so some of you, it's time for you to look depression in the face, anxiety in the face, to addiction in the face, and say, no, 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 it stops here with me. So what do you do? I, I know that my Bible tells me that I can cast all my cares and anxiety on the Lord because he cares for me. 
We don't like surrender all the time. and We don't like to give up things all the time. But let me tell you, you holding on to some things, you're taking responsibility for some things that you were never meant to carry. And so tonight, what I want you to do when you're surrounded by the body of Christ, by people who love you, is to cast those things on Jesus. Cast those things on the Lord. Put them at the cross. Say, I don't want to carry them anymore because while I'm carrying all these things I'm not supposed to carry, this anxiety because I've taken on too much, I can't do what you've called me to do. And I'm ready to step out and do what you've called me to do. I'm ready to worship like I'm supposed to worship you. I'm ready to glorify you the way you deserve to be glorified. I, I know I'm not worthy to be in your presence, but thank God you sent Jesus to die on a cross so that I can stand in your presence and worship you. So right here, right now, for the rest of this worship set, let's go all out after God. All out after God because toxic relationships, I don't need them. I'm letting them go. Anxiety, I don't need it. I'm letting it go. I know I'm still going to have to face it every once in a while, but every time it comes face to face with me, I'm giving it to you, Jesus. Social media uh, influence, I don't need it. I'm letting it go. Friends who don't really care about me, but only care about what I can do for them, I'm letting them go. Because nothing else matters in this world but Jesus. Don't give me anything else. Just give me Jesus. I don't want anything else. Just give me Jesus. If the whole world faded away tonight and I still had Jesus, I've got every single thing I need. Give me Jesus. Oh, come on. If you're ready to lay it down so that the Lord can take it from you. If you just need Jesus tonight, if you're confident that if you had Jesus and nothing else, you'd have everything you need, lift your voice tonight. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, I can already feel it. I can already feel it tonight. Somebody's letting it go. Somebody's putting it at the feet of Jesus. Somebody's gonna get free tonight. Come on.
Just give me Jesus. Come on, are you desperate? Give me Jesus. Like we really need him tonight. Like we really need him every single day, every moment we are alive. Come on, give Jesus praise. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. I said Jesus. There it is. Oh, he's worthy. Amen, amen. Do me a favor. Welcome to Youth Night. Do me a favor. Quickly head back to your seats, please. Quickly, quickly, quickly. While they head back to their seats, welcome to everybody that's joining us online, whether you're with us right now in this moment or you're joining us later on. Such an honor that you would let us be with you, let us speak to you, let us impact your day or your night or whatever. Such an honor to be with you. Amen, amen. Come on, if you're in the room, put your hands together for everybody joining us online. Give them a big Rock City welcome. Come on. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Yeah. If you're ever near Columbus, Ohio, you want to join us, we'd be happy to have you. If you live here, come on. Be with us every single month. All right. Welcome to Youth Night. First Youth Night of 2022. Ah. Uh, and it's a special one for a lot of reasons. It's a special one for a lot of reasons. Um, I just feel like God's going to do something incredible in our youth ministry this year. So I'm happy to kick that off. Um, but tonight I got a very special friend who's going to preach tonight. So I'm not going to preach tonight. Um, but one of, my, one of my great friends is going to preach. He's going to bring the word. And you know him if you go to our church, if you attend our church regularly. You know him. You love him. Especially if you tend, attend Polaris. He's there all the time. If, uh, if you love the song, Glory Fills This Room, right, that we sang this morning, then you know who he is. He is our Polaris worship director. So come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Come on. And let's welcome Patrick Crawford to the platform to preach the word of God today. Come on. What's up, Rock City? Yo. What up? Man, y'all can be seated, y'all can be seated. I saw on social media, Kyan and then was like, oh, we got a special guest speaker. I'm like, man, they gonna think Bieber's gonna walk out here or something. It's just me, just your friendly neighborhood worship leader. Um, we're not on Bieber level yet, uh, but I think one day we might, we might be. I like to come to youth nights every now and again. I sit in the back and I worship with you all and just to see how this night has grown, just to see the passion that you all bring to worship. Um, it's encouraging, it's incredible. I think that y'all have one of the best youth ministries in the world. Who agrees, who agrees? One of the best youth ministries in the world. I ain't been to many, I gotta be honest, but from what I've seen, this has gotta be one of the best ones. And not just because of the lights and the stage and the games and the silent disco, all that stuff is easy to come by. Basketball and arcades, it's all easy to come by. All you need is the internet and a little bit of money. But what's not easy to come by is the leaders that you guys have. The Pastor Kyams and the Pastor Daves and the Pastor Rindys and the, 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 the Pastor Anthonys and the, all the pastors that y'all have are incredible. Their hearts for you, they love you guys so much. They love Jesus and just the passion that they bring to trying to point you all to Jesus, that is hard to come by. The worship team is hard to come by. Who's blessed by the worship team here? Man, this worship team is incredible. And I'm not just talking about youth worship. I'm talking about any worship. Their musical ability, their voices, but also their hearts for Jesus. Passionately pursuing him and trying to bring y'all along and just to worship with you. And again, their hearts for you guys, it's incredible. Um, so I'm blessed to be here. Um, I'm grateful for Pastor Kyan for asking me to do this. Um, let's just, let's pray. And then we're going to get into it. Is that all right? All right, if you would just pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that your presence and your spirit is here, Lord God. I thank you that, you're, um, that you inhabit the praises of your people, no matter how old or young or how new we are to the faith, God. And I thank you for the worship that took place um, just now, God. 
I pray that your spirit will continue to move, that your spirit will continue to speak through me, Lord God. I pray that you would just speak um, through me. Anything that I say that's not of you, Lord God, I pray that you would protect the ears of those who hear, Lord. I just want them to hear from you, not me, Lord God. So we just ask for your wisdom. We ask for your presence. We ask for your glory to be seen. We ask for your word to go forth and to bear fruit, Lord. We love you so much. We love you so much. We just, we need more of you right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 As Pastor Kyle mentioned, I am the worship director at Polaris. Um, Shouts out, Polaris. Hey! Oh, man, we in here. Man, I wasn't expecting that. Dang. Um, (laughs) Another thing about me is I am married, and my wife just gave birth to two twin girls. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. They are. They're six weeks old. So they're newborn, so, so that means that I'm tired. That means I'm tired right now. I'm pretty much always tired because babies really don't care about your sleep schedule, right? If they're hungry, they need it now, and they're going to let you know about it. So I'm tired. But the other thing that means is that I've learned a lot about babies and baby accessories. Baby accessories. See, the thing about having a baby is you get the baby, but you also get all this stuff that comes with the baby, all this stuff I didn't even know existed, You got nose pickers, nose blowers, nose suckers, boogers, scrapers. A lot goes on in the noses of babies, I've learned. I know, it's nasty, right? You got face wipes. You got butt wipes. Don't mix them up. You got all different types of fabrics and rags. You got spit rags. You got got burp rags. You got towels. You got bath rags. You got different types of outfits for different types of day. This is a morning outfit. This is a night outfit. I'm like, my goodness, there's just so much to learn. There's also this thing that's called, that we have, it's called Wendy, the gas passer. Yeah, see, babies, they, they, they get gas sometimes, and if you're lucky, they'll burp it up, but sometimes it gets a little deeper, and then they get fussy because it hurts their stomachs. And when that happens, they have a tool. It looks like a little plastic straw, and you, you apply it to the backside of the baby. It relieves the pressure, and now the baby's happy, right? I, it's disgusting. It is disgusting. I didn't know what it was. I'm like, what is this? It's a little straw. And I'm like, everything else seems to be for the baby's noses. So this must be a nose blower, a nose sucker, something like that. Now, thankfully, I know, she just, she just went like that. I know, I'm new to this. Thankfully, my wife was there before I did anything weird. My wife was there and was like, hey, um, this, this ain't for that. This ain't for that. So she was able to tell me what the purpose of that was so I didn't use it in a way that was ineffective and let's be honest, a little bit nasty. Right? I'm gonna give you one more example about the importance of understanding the purpose of something before you use it. When I was 17, I went to Costa Rica with, um, with, with my school. And we ended up one night, we were in this really nice, it was like a, kind of like a hotel in this huge bathroom, glass shower. I'm like, man, this place is nice. I'm like, they even have a fancy Costa Rican toilet. And I go over there and I'm like, man, this is, look at this toilet, man, we really made it. This toilet is beautiful, look at that. Look at that. It was. It was, hold on now, it gets worse. Um, I'm like, man, this is weird. There's no water in the toilet. I'm like, that's strange, it's clean, it's clean. There's no water in it though. I'm like, man, this, is, this must be like a, you know, a fancy Costa Rica toilet. So I look in there, I'm like, huh, this is weird. Let me flush it to see if, if it works. Now, little did I know it wasn't a toilet. Um, it was what's called a bidet. And, and if, you don't, it, if you don't know what a bidet is, you don't really need to know. All you, it's for like cleaning and hygiene and stuff. But all you really need to know is that the water goes up. The water goes up. And as I said before, I was leaning over the toilet and I yanked the handle. Now, not only did the water spray up as it should, but somebody must have cranked the water pressure up to about a thousand out of 10 because it came up so fast, I didn't have time to think, move, or blink, and it went directly into my eye. So I pull away from the thing. This water is so strong. The ceiling was about 10 feet high. The water is spraying the ceiling. I'm blind. I can't figure out how to turn it off. The floor is starting to flood. This is a beautiful Costa Rican bathroom and I'm messing it all up. I'm in a painful, messy, uncomfortable situation all because I didn't have somebody there to tell me, hey, um, this, this ain't for that. Right? Somebody say this. Ain't for that. I had no idea what the purpose of this thing was and so I mishandled it. I misused it and I ended up in a painful and messy situation. It is important that we understand the purpose of something. 
Otherwise, I could end up messy. Whether it is Wendy the gas pastor, whether it's a bidet, or whether it's a relationship. Oh, y'all know we had to get here. It's February, right? It's relationship month. You're like, how is he going to take this to relationships? Well, I just did it. All right, we're talking about relationships. All right, and, 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 and in relationship month, we could talk about, I could stand up here and we could address specific questions that we have about relationships. Uh, we could have a panel, I think we've done that before, have a panel and address specific questions. And those are really good. And I would encourage you to get advice from godly people about whatever specific questions you might have about a dating relationship. But it also is helpful to take a step back and find the general purpose of something. Because if you find the purpose of something, a lot of those specific questions will end up answering themselves. You discover the purpose and a lot of other things will fall into place. Now, if I really want to find out the purpose of something, I'm going to go to the one who designed it. So we're talking about relationships. We're talking about the human heart. We're talking about humanity. I'm going to go to God and his word. Amen. Because we know that in the word of God, we have all the answers for life and godliness and everything that we really, really need to walk right is in the word. But if you read the Bible from cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation, you'll realize the Bible doesn't say nothing about dating. Wait a minute, did you just say the Bible has all the answers for everything and now you start saying the Bible doesn't have, say anything at all about dating? How can it have the answer to something it doesn't talk about at all? Well, this is a principle, and I hope you guys can take this principle and apply it to other areas where you might have a specific question, but oftentimes the specific word or the specific topic you're looking for is not in the Bible, but the Bible will talk about something more general that applies. So the Bible doesn't talk about dating, but it talks about relationships. It talks about friendships. It talks about marriage. It talks about all these things that can be applied to dating. And when we look to the scriptures, we find two overarching principles for relationships in general, two big ones, two really, really big ones. And the first one is relationships are for glorifying God. That's purpose number one. Relationships are for glorifying God. To glorify God, that's the, that's the reason we were all created. It's the ultimate and highest purpose of all things. Isaiah 43, 7 tells us, this is God speaking. He says, everyone whom I called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. We were created for the glory of God. This is the ultimate purpose. It's the why to end all whys. If you get nothing else from tonight, this right here is a cheat code. This is the why to end all whys. Look, when I was a kid... I was a Y kid, not a white kid. I'm mixed, I always have been. I was, I, was a, I was a Y kid. Always had to ask why. My mom be like, put a coat on before you go outside. Why? Because otherwise you're going you're gonna to catch a cold. Why would I catch a cold? Because it's cold outside. Why is it cold outside, mommy? Because <sighs> it's winter. Why is it winter, mommy? Because we live in Ohio. In Ohio, there are four seasons. We have a week of spring, we have summer, we have first winter, and we have second winter. I'd be like, Mommy, why do we live in Ohio? She'd be like, I have no idea. I have no idea, son. Eventually, she'd just be like, all right, just go outside, get sick if you want to. I'm tired of answering all these questions. Right? Now, when you're a why kid, it can get a little annoying. But I want to encourage you all to be why Christians. And not asking God, like, why do I have to do this? I think I have a better idea. Why can't I do it my way? But asking, what's the purpose of this? Why am I pursuing this? Why do I want to engage in this? Why do I want to date this person? Why do I want to go to this school? Why do I want to start this career? Why do I want to, whatever, get to the bottom of the motivation, get to the bottom of the purpose, get to the bottom of the why. And when you get to the bottom of the why, spoiler, it's the glory of God. Why do we do good deeds? It's just so people will like us, so that we can do a nice thing for somebody. Well, Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who's in heaven. Glory to God. Why do we fight against sin and strive for holiness? 2 Peter 2, 11 to 12. I urge you as strangers and exiles to abstain from sinful desires that wage war against the soul. Conduct yourselves honorably so that when they slander you as evildoers, they will observe your good works and will glorify God on the day he visits. Why do we give generously to those around us? 2 Corinthians 9, 13, this is just rapid fire. By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your contribution for them and all others. 
We're at Rock City Church. We want to make heaven full at Rock City. This is what drives everything that we do. Why do we want to make heaven full? Any guesses? Hey, 2 Corinthians 4.15. This is Paul talking about why he preaches the gospel throughout the ends of the earth. And he says, indeed, everything is for your benefit so that grace and as salvation extends through more and more people, it may cause thanksgiving to increase to the glory of God. I got one more. It's going to wrap it all up for you. All right. First Corinthians 10.31 says, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. That everything, that, that includes like whatever you're thinking about, it includes that for the glory of God. Like I said, this is a cheat code. What's the purpose of the relationship that you're in or that you're thinking about getting into to glorify God? We talk about glorifying God, though. It sounds a little churchy, don't it? it sounds a little spiritual. Glorify. I mean, you probably don't say the word glorify when you're just hanging out with your friends playing video games, right? It's really kind of a church word. So when we think about glorify, I want us to think about it like this. To glorify God means to make him look as good as he really is. Just to make him look as good as he really is. God is glorious. He is good. He is great. He is loving. And we can't add to his glory, but we can point to it. We can reflect it. We can uncover it. We do this in part because we were made in the image of God. Genesis 1:27. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Being made in the image of God means that you have value and you have worth. No matter what you've done or where you've been or where you're going, there is an intrinsic worth that is in every single human being because every human being was made in the image of God. But it also means that we are to image God. We are to reflect him so that people can look at our lives and say, that's, some, that's what God is like. That's what God is like. You know how you go to the eye doctor and they put that huge, whatever it is, thing in front of your face and they go, which is clear, one or two? One or two? One. And I'm like, I saw, they look the same. They look exactly the same. I what you want me to say, that both. One or two. All right, we're going to do something. It's a very easy version of that, all right? It's not going to be as hard as the eye doctor. We're going to look to the screens. Which of these images looks better? One or two? Three. Hey, oh, <laughs> come on. You lucky Pastor Indy ain't here. He's not here, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, Indy. You look great, man. You look great. <laughs> which, of these, which of these images look better? Image one? Or image two. Hey. They look a little mad, but they look good, though. They look good, though. We're going to do one more. It's really easy, like I told you. Which looks better? Which image? Image one? Don't turn it yet. <laughs> his, his siblings are about to... T which looks better? Image one? Or image two? Hey. Hey, that is, that is, huh, you took that photo? That is Benson pre-beard. Where's Benson? The beard is great, bro. The beard is great. Benson, you look great. Keep the beard, though. Yeah, keep the beard. This was real easy. Like, which of the images was better? The one that was more clearly representing the characteristics of the person. That was the better image. You could tell what Indy looked like. In image two. You could tell what Benson looked like without a beard in, in, in image two. Oh man, they really coming for you, Benson. But as we image God, if we want to image him more clearly, if we want to glorify him better, we do that by more accurately reflecting his characteristics in the way that we live. And here's the crazy thing about God. God exists as one God, but three persons. It's getting complicated. This is like some you know, it's confusing. No one, no one really understands it. But there's Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but there's one God. All right? And it's complicated, but the only thing we really need to understand right now is that that means that God exists in relationship with himself. Before he created anything, he was the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In fellowship, in relationship, loving himself. In a way, God is a relationship. So if we want to reflect the characteristics of God most clearly, Relationships are necessary. We need them. I was created to glorify God. God is a relationship. I need relationships. 
to glorify him most clearly. Think about it. How can you reflect the love of God if there's no one for you to love? How can you reflect the kindness and the generosity and the patience of God if there's no one to receive your kindness and your generosity and your patience? Relationships are necessary. And when people look at your relationship, if you're in a dating relationship, you're thinking about getting in a dating relationship, you've been in one, when they look at your relationship, did they go, that's what God is like. That's what God is like. But God has shows a selfless love, for example. Selfless love. He came and he died on the cross so that he could win us back from the power of sin and hell and death and the grave. Selfless love, giving up himself for us. But sometimes we get into a relationship because I got something I need and I think you got it. And, and I want to take from you. And maybe I got something that you need and you think that you could just take from me. And so now we're in a relationship that's selfish and it's about taking as opposed to giving. That's a blurry image. It's going to end up a mess. It's going to end up a mess. God is patient and forgiving, but sometimes in our relationships, I'm really not trying to hear it. You say one thing to me, I'm writing you off. I'm not patient. I'm not forgiving. That's a blurry image. It's going to end up a mess. God is holy, but sometimes I'll get into a relationship because I think that I might be able to fulfill my unholy desires with this person. That's a blurry image, y'all. It doesn't reflect the character of God. It doesn't fulfill the purpose. We're going to have some problems. The purpose of our relationship is to glorify God. It's also about growing with God. We're created to glorify God. I'm going to let y'all write it down. Relationships are for growing with God. We want to glorify God and be in relationship with him. That's the whole purpose for our creation. God has given us the gift of relationships to help us towards that end. One of the reasons relationships are so powerful is because on some level, they determine the direction of our lives. Pastor Chad said this earlier in the sermon, uh, or earlier on, on Sunday in his sermon. He says that the people that are closest to you will determine the trajectory of your life. And the closer someone is to you, the more power they have over your direction. Paul, Paul understood this in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, bad company corrupts good character. Paul knew this. Who you join yourself to will determine the direction of your life. Now, I don't mean never hang out with people who are unbelievers and never hang out with people who are doing stuff or, you know, well, you're, you're not a very good person. I don't think I want to be friends with you. Not that, right? Don't isolate yourself. Jesus hung out with everybody, but his circle was his disciples. So the people you keep close to you, make sure they're going in a direction that you want to go. Hebrews 10, 24 says to consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Join yourself with someone who's going to spur you on in the direction of love and obedience to God who's going to walk in the direction away from sin. Any relationship that creates distance between you and Jesus is not a healthy relationship. I'm just going to say that right now. Any relationship that creates distance between you and Jesus is not a healthy relationship. Love will never lead you to sin. It will never pressure you to sin. If you're in a relationship and they're like, you really got to go to, really got to go to youth night? You really got to go to small group? Why are you always hanging out at that church? They're weird. And they're, they're, they're pulling you away from Jesus. It's not a good relationship. It's just not. It's not fulfilling the purpose of helping you walk with God. Now, look, if you'll notice these two big purposes that we just hit on real quick, glorify God and grow with God. You don't need to be in a dating relationship to fulfill either of those. Not one. You can fulfill that in a, in a friendship in a mentor relationship with a pastor, right? And, and, and honestly, I might encourage y'all to do that. If you're in middle school, maybe don't date. You didn't ask me, but if you did, I might say, it's all right, just like chill. Even if all your friends are dating, don't feel like you have to do it as well. You can fulfill your purpose of glorifying God and walking with him single. The reason I might recommend that is because of the last purpose of dating the last main purpose, and that is to prepare us for marriage. Some of y'all are like, man, I'm in sixth grade. <laughs> you are tripping. Well, hear me out. Hear me out now. If you date someone, there are two possible outcomes. You're going to break up or you're going to get married. That's it. There's no third option. 
So if you're not dating with at least the idea of marriage in the back, 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 back of your head, at least a little bit, then you're dating to break up. And that's weird. That's weird. Don't be weird. Don't date just to break up. All right, that's not good for anybody. Remember this, marriage is for intimacy. Dating is for clarity. (laughs) Marriage is for intimacy. Dating is for clarity. What type of person should I marry? Now, now, now you, don't, you don't necessarily have to know if you're going to marry this person off the rip. Like, don't go out for ice cream and ask them how many kids they want. Again, don't be weird, you know? <laughs> don't propose on the third date. Like, just, you know, but, but, but are they the type of person that I could see myself with for the rest of my life? Are, are they gentle or are they harsh when they deal with people? Are they self-controlled or do they have a hot temper? Are they patient or are they impulsive? Are they respectful? to people around them that can't give them nothing in return? Or they're just respectful to you because maybe they think they can get something from you. So they're gonna treat you nice, but everybody else in their life, they're not treating with respect. Are they selfless? Or they're always looking out for themselves. If this is not the type of person that you wanna marry, why are you dating them? Why are you dating them? Because they're fun and they're cute and they're popular? Y'all. It's going to end up a mess. It's going to end up a mess. Dating is for clarity. What type of person am I? Because look, I don't know y'all in this room, most of y'all in this room, but I do know that nobody is perfect. And a dating relationship can help expose some things in me that I need to work out, right? What type of person am I? Gain clarity on these things while you can. This is one of the reasons why dating is effective at times, right? Clarity. We're, we're, getting, we're getting close to the end, but look, I want you to understand this. But as it comes to clarity, don't date in the dark. What? I know, right? Don't date in the dark. I'm hoping to catch your attention. What the world does he mean? I don't mean don't literally be in the dark with somebody, although that's probably good advice. Hey, come on. Come on. We all human. Don't date in the dark. By that I mean don't isolate yourself. Keep a small circle of people that you trust, that care about you, that love you, that have godly wisdom and give them access to your relationship. Let them shine a light on your relationship because clarity cannot grow in the dark. You need people on the outside because there are people who will be able to see things about your relationship that you can't see just because you're too close, not because you're dumb or you're too young and you can't figure it out. It's just you're too close to the situation, right? Everybody in here knows how to read, I'm assuming. Yep, everybody in here knows how to read. If you hold a book right on your nose like that, and I'm like, hey, read that, read that for me. He'd be like, I, I can't read that. I'm like, you don't know how to read? No, I know how to read, I just, I just can't read that. It's not that you don't know how to read, you're just, you're just too close. You just need some distance. You need somebody outside of your relationship who can see things a little bit more clearly than you and and remind you, hey, you should probably date with the end in mind. Remember, y'all might break up, so y'all might not want to give each other too much of yourselves, either physically or emotionally, because if y'all break up, it's really going to hurt, right? Right? Remember, y'all might break up, so don't give something to them that you don't want them taking with them if they leave. Sometimes it's hard to see that. Your emotions are high, your clarity is low, all right? You ever been so mad, you, I can't see straight. <laughs> Hopefully you don't sound like that when you're mad, you know. Or you've just been so sad, you're just like, I can't, even, I can't even think. I can't focus on this test I got coming up because my heart is so broken. I, I, I just, I can't even think. Because when emotions are high, clarity is low. So you need some people who aren't as emotionally invested as you to be like, "Uh, y'all might break up. Y'all might. Or or you need somebody outside to be like, hey, uh, remember, y'all might get married. So this thing, that's always a little thing. You know, he loses his temper here and there. Sometimes he punches the walls and, you know, but he's never hit me before. Hey, this is real. Sometimes you need somebody to step in and be like, hey, um, you don't see this? You don't see it? It's, It's like this big right now, but in 10 years... If y'all married, you might have some issues. Young men, if y'all hitting walls and throwing stuff in front of y'all girls, 
Hey, no, I'm not playing with y'all. Y'all, hey, y'all got to go. I really hope that there, hey, I really hope that there's an older brother in that girl's life who can come grip you up. Hey, don't do that. Don't do that. Ladies, before it gets too deep, let somebody in on that. Y'all might end up married. You don't want to be married to that, right? All right, so don't date or, or don't date in the dark. Give other people access. I'm going to wrap with this. We've been talking about the, the big purposes of dating. Think about these things. You want your, your relationships to glorify God, to reflect his characteristics. You want your relationships to help you grow with God and walk closer with God. And you want to date with the end in mind and remember that you might be married. And I'm like, I'm 14. I'm 13. Look, I get it. I get it. I know it's hard to look that far into the future. I know it's hard sometimes to look past the right now, to look past today. You're like, hey, I have some needs right now that I need met today. I can't be worried about five years, 10 years down the road. I, I have some desires that I feel like I need, I need fulfilled right now. I get it. When I was in high school, my first relationship, I was like, I mean, she liked me. She looked kind of good to me right now. Like, okay, I'm old enough. It's around about that time. Let's get in a relationship. I wouldn't think about no marriage. I wouldn't think about glorifying God. I wouldn't think about, is this person going to help me walk more closely with Jesus? I get it. It's hard. Some of you right now, you have some deep desires in your soul. You're like, man, I'm just so broken right now. I'm just so hurt right now. I'm just so hungry for something right now. I don't care where it comes from. I just need it right now. And if I just get into that relationship, or if I just stay in this relationship, maybe it'll get better. Maybe I'll be able to fulfill that desire that I have. Maybe if I just hold on for the one which doesn't really exist. Maybe if I just hold on for that one relationship, then finally I'll be satisfied. Some of you are looking to, for, for value and for worth. Some of y'all, even in your own homes, you've been told you're nothing. You'll never amount to anything. You're not worth anything. Nobody could ever love you. And when you're dealing with that, you're just like, I just, need to, I just need something, anything. And maybe this relationship will be it. I'm here to tell you today that this relationship, it ain't for that. It ain't for that. Maybe you just want to feel like you belong somewhere. I just want to be accepted. All my friends are dating. I just want to belong. I feel like I don't belong anywhere. Maybe this relationship will do. This relationship, whichever one you're looking at, it ain't for that. Maybe I have an identity issue. I don't even know who I am. I'm 14, 15, 16. I've got all these different people speaking into my life, telling me who I am, what I am, what I can do, what I've done. I don't even know who I am. I just need somebody. Maybe I can gain some semblance of an identity if I connect myself with this person and then at least I'm their boyfriend or their girlfriend or I can get something. For, I, can, I just need to know who I am. Whatever relationship you're looking for for that, it's not for that. It's not the purpose. You can't find it there. I just want to be known. I just want to be understood. Nobody understands me. My family doesn't get it. My parents, they don't get me. My friends don't understand me even. I feel lonely. I feel like I'm not loved. Maybe at least in this relationship, it's terrible, but it's better than nothing. He ain't great. She ain't great, but it's better than nothing. I just want to feel like I'm worth something, that I'm known, that I'm understood, that I'm loved. Look, this relationship is not for that. There is a relationship that is for that. Y'all already know what it is. Look, the only relationship that will satisfy the deepest longings of your heart is your relationship with your heavenly father, your designer, your creator. Look, you want to feel valued. You want to feel like you're worth something. Your creator said that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He knit you together in your mother's womb. You are more valuable than the lilies and the sparrows in all of creation because you were made in the image of God. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. You are valuable. You are worthy. I don't care if it's your mama. The God of heaven and earth said you are worth 
something to me. If you feel like you just want to belong somewhere in Christ, you are adopted into the family of God and nobody, nothing, nowhere can take you out of that. You belong to God in Christ. You want to know who you are? Who better to run to than the one who created you? You want to feel known and understood? Psalm 139 said God knows everything about you. When you stand up, when you sit down, he knows your thoughts. Every word that you speak, he knows before you speak it. There is nobody who knows you like your creator. Do you want to be loved in Christ? There is nothing that separates us and ever can separate us from the love of God. There is a relationship, whatever that thing is for you that you're searching for, this this is where it is found in Christ you are fully accepted, fully known, fully understood, fully loved, fully you. As I was thinking about this message, do we stand at this point, Kyle? I don't know what to do here. We about to worship in a little bit. Why don't you already stand? Why don't you already stand? <laughs> I'm new here. But look, when I was, when I was thinking about this message and what, what I felt like the Lord might want to say. It, it was two people, two types of people I had in mind. I think I did the wrong thing, but there was two types of people I had in mind. The first, I'm wait till they get up here. The first person, you've given your life to Jesus put your faith and your trust in him. You've repented of your sin. You said, Lord, my life is yours. You've trusted Jesus to save your soul, but not to satisfy your soul. You're like, Jesus, save me from hell, please. But you're still chasing and pursuing other things to make you feel satisfied, to make you feel loved like you belong. There's other things that you're chasing to satisfy your soul. But look here, Jesus did not die just to save you, but to satisfy you in the here and now and forever. If that's you and you're like, I've given my life to Jesus and I still feel so empty. I still feel so empty. Trust Jesus to satisfy your soul. Lean into this relationship. Surround yourself with people that'll carry you in that direction. But there's another person in this room and you've never given your life to Jesus at all. Maybe you're here for the first time. Maybe you're watching online and you're like, I. I I've never given my life to Jesus. I've never repented of my sin and put my trust in Jesus, but I want that. I want a relationship with the source of all goodness in life. You can have it, but there's one thing standing in the way, and it's sin. Sin for, for every one of us. Not you, not just you, it's for all of us. Sin is standing in the way, obstructing our ability to run to our Father and to receive everything that we need. So if that's you and you've never given your life to Jesus, turn from your sin and put your faith in Jesus. If y'all would all just close your eyes. I'm gonna pray for both of those people, but, but if you've never given your life to Jesus and you want a relationship with your Creator, the source of all life, the one who can fully satisfy your soul, it's as easy as turning from your sin, saying, Jesus, I turn from my sin. I'm tired of doing it on my own, trying to make my own rules. God, I fully surrender to you. Forgive me, save me. I trust in the name of Jesus. It's as easy as that. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. Father God, for those in the room who have called upon your name to be saved but not to be satisfied, Lord God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would fall on them right now. That all of the needs of their heart they would understand can only be met in you, Lord God, and they would run to you with everything that they have, Lord. I pray that as we go back and we start singing, give me Jesus, as we start singing that there's nothing I want, there's no one else that will satisfy, Lord God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would make that reality true to the hearts of your children in this room, Lord God. I pray that you would be a comfort to those who need it, Lord. I pray that you would be direction for those who need it, Lord, that they would understand that the fullness of salvation in Christ is more than just getting out of hell and walking into heaven, but it is experiencing the fullness of a relationship with you right here and right now father God we don't want anything else 
We don't need anything else. It's okay to start singing that even if, even if you don't know if you fully believe it yet. Jesus, you are our one thing. God, I'm tired of running to everything else. Tired of running to other people. Jesus, we just want you. God, we don't want anything else.
celebrate that he is a good God he is kind and he is faithful come on he is good Seconds. Best song. Let me tell you a few things. So, tonight you came in and on your chair you have one of these. You have messages, you have one of these. These are so important. It's a connect card. And you're able to tell us what happened to you tonight. If you made a decision to follow Jesus, you can mark it on here and we want to celebrate with you. We will literally celebrate it with you this week. If you have a prayer request, fill it out here. If you recommitted your life, fill it out here. And if you don't like paper, there's a QR code right up on the screen. Just take a picture of it. Tell us what happened tonight. We want to hear, we want to celebrate, we want to pray for you, and we want to pray with you. Like that was great. Wasn't tonight, tonight such a fun night? Wasn't it a great night? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, listen, the fun doesn't end here. After this, after tonight, other nights in February, we have something called small groups. Yeah. If you don't, yeah, shout out my small group, guys. So if you don't know what small groups is, Basically, it's a way to dive deeper in with your faith, dive deeper in relationship with God and be surrounded by other friends, other people in your community. Because one thing we're not called to do is life alone. So small groups right. from six to eight at every locate, well, at Hilliard and Polaris and soon yeah. to be Short North. So for more information on that, see Pastor Katie. So we have that every week, every Sunday after this. And then we'll meet back in here March 6th for our next youth night. March 6th, March 6th, exactly mark your calendars. Invite your next friends, mark your calendars. Yeah. And lastly, if you're in high school, this is a message to all of you. We have a great worship team. They are gifted, they are anointed, and they love to lead you. But you have an opportunity. If you're in high school, we have worship auditions Saturday, February 26th from 9 to noon. If you guys want to come and audition, go right to that link, rockcitychurch.tv slash worship edition, QR I won't code, be there. I boom, can't sing. easy as that. I Don't won't be feel there. like you're counting yourself out, just like Kyan was saying. You have a gift, and if you believe you have a gift, come on out and worship. It doesn't have to be very hard. And that's all we got for you. I'll be there to cheer you on if you go. I'll be there cheering yeah. you on. It'll be great. Come cheer for you. Yes. But, you ready? So ready. ready. You guys for ready? This next song? You, you guys, guys ready? ready? Yeah. Okay. All right, awesome.
Come on, we sing this out. I live to bring you glory, glory, louder. I live to bring you glory, glory, every second of every hour. I live to bring you Hanging out with you guys for the silent disco, and we'll see you March 6th at Next Youth Night. <laughs> <laughs>